Oh, good evening, or good whatever it time, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Welcome to Jamie TV, streaming 100% live on YouTube, powered by Streamlabs, the Arig Stream, and the Irig Pro Duo, and God knows what else. I am currently playing a vintage um, V75 Silver Burst, one of only 100 made a 25th anniversary limited edition from vintage so we can just get that without a reflection there on the on the noggin there we go right okay so let's just have a little quick look who's in the chat and oh let me just actually let me just bring that back up there so you can look at that while i'm talking uh who's in the chat and did the guitar level sound okay? I forgot to check my levels on the iRig stream, actually. Uh, let's have a, a Deckers. Deckers, honestly. Who says Deckers anymore? How old am I? Um, okay, Ed says he's not heard the DD21 yet. Well, he's going to hear that one soon. But that was the Chow Centaur. And the reason I had this picture on my screen is because this is a Clon Centaur which is what it's um i don't know if it's supposed to be an exact replica of really but it's kind of influenced by it if you like uh the clan centaur is a classic pedal a much loved sort of much sought after um i believe they're handmade and i saw something on the internet um saying that they were available to order again um so presume for a while they weren't available i don't know let's have a look at the chat like i intended to uh ed says i like the way the apps look that are designed by paul yes designed by paul is the developer of the dd21 um the clon centaur uh, or rather the chow centaur is made by uh chow dsp I've contacted both developers. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Uh, what else did Ed say? Uh, quite often they like in many other areas. I don't know actually, Ed, because I don't have um, any other apps by this developer. I will correct that soon, I'm sure. Um, so you were a bit hesitant with this app. Okay. Uh, the clone is a beast. Also price-wise. Well, yes. Um, the the Chow Centaur is a completely free app, and um, the DD21 is only two pounds ninety nine in English shekelage. Actually, let me tell you something quickly. Um, when I went on my first ever proper tour, I almost said world tour, but it wasn't a world tour. It felt like one at the time because it was my first experience of it. But I went on a tour uh, with uh, Tony Martin, who formerly of, of Black Sabbath. And I toured as part of his solo band. And uh, we went on this tour of Europe and Eastern Bloc. And whilst we were out there, um, the record company kept adding um, adding dates and changing dates and stuff. And we went all over, all road work. And, um, and it was like every day, or at least every other day, we were in a new country. And it gets really kind of difficult and confusing trying to remember what the currency is in the new country and so after after trying not really very hard for a couple of weeks i started just calling the currency wherever we were shitters so in a shop i would say how many shitters is that and of course when you're with a band you know you think you're really funny and you you know you rule the world and so i'd actually say that in in shops uh and uh so of course in some places where people spoke english well um it didn't go down that well really but i've always found myself amusing <laughs> insane shitters i once said it in um in poland and really upset someone anyway that's a long story we'll not go into that um so who else is in the chat hello everyone thank you very much for joining me hello ed hello joshua meerkat music's here uh hello alan sounds good here oh yeah i asked what it sounded like didn't i yeah <laughs> i totally forgot 
Uh, evening, Stephen. Okay, right. Okay, so, so um, what am I going to do? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what these two effects sound like, and um, because because I'm really quite impressed with both of them. They're both quite different, but they are both in that category of we're not talking about. Oh, evening, Samuel. Thank you for being here, young man. Um, he's the same age as me, so I'll call him young man, right? Uh, instead of you daft old ancient hippie. <laughs> no offense, Samuel. Um, so, uh, yes, what was I going to say? Right, yes, so so both of these apps are in that category of they will bring some drive to your uh, guitar or whatever you plug into them, and uh, but not like insane over-the-top distortion. Both apps are really good for if you're looking for that kind of somewhere between clean and pretty dirty. Uh, but both have very different characteristics and actually both are very simple which is good because simple suits me. Right, so um, I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to put my guitar back on. Now which one is the... Uh, Alright, so the Chow Centre is on guitar too. You'll see that I've already begun a project here. I'll, I'll explain a bit more about that in a bit. Right, so... <laughs> you'll hear it's pretty noisy at the moment but I'm just gonna take the levels down to more like it well actually when you oh, does it do that thing it does that thing I like I love it when apps do that thing where you double tap and it goes back to sort of neutral position or 12 o'clock or whatever right so this is set the way the app would be when it opens and it would sound kind of like this <laughs> So it sounds like a guitar that's plugged into something. Um, guitar players will know what I mean, like when you plug a guitar straight into your interface, into your computer or your iPad or whatever, um, it kind of sounds like nothing. If I just bypass this, it just sort of doesn't really sound like anything. Engage it. Now it sounds like I'm plugged into something. It sounds more alive. Um, so the controls on this are very, very simple. We have a gain. So if I wind up the gain, you'll hear we have that tone that's going to push the amp a little harder. I'm not using an amp emulation, by the way, or anything at the moment. I simply have a guitar into Cubasis 3 and I have the Chow Centaur and I have Eventide Spring Reverb on a very subtle setting just for that you know just for that little bit of reverb magic. The Eventide Spring is my uh, current favorite I do use other things for guitars but it's kind of my current favorite um, effect for um, getting for, for a guitar sound you know all right, so there's my gain. I'm going to bring my level up a bit. And the more I bring my level up... Now, actually, let me just look at my mixing desk. I've, oh, see, I've got that turned down a bit. That's a bit stupid. I'm going to crank that up a bit. Oops. Right, okay, let's go back to the app. Right, uh, okay. So, this is what I wanted to show you. So, it's basically, it's very, very obvious, traditional way of using a guitar effect we balance gain against level so if I crank up the gain then I can bring down some level to compensate so there's my dirtier sound and uh, take the gain back bring up the level it's very very nice let's add some tone the tone control is really effective on this for a kind of a sort of a, a crunchy if I wind up the gain all the way I'm, I'm just going to do this to show you sort of the extent of the pedals dirt <laughs> So, you know, it gets pretty dirty, but it's not like it's, you know, it's not death metal. Right, 
Okay, now it also has another feature. Excuse me, pulling faces. I'm attempting really, really hard not to sneeze. Um, we have this little noggin here. If I press this, I can switch from traditional to neural, which is quite a different tone. because I kind of like that one better and then all right so before we do anything else let's come out of here and also have a look at the DD21. Now I'm going to be using both of them in a project, so you're going to hear plenty of them. Uh, DD21, I've got to my mixing desk, let me show that one's turned up as well. Okay, and then uh, here, right then. And why does, that doesn't fill the screen, that one. It just sort of, it just sort of dances up and down from the top to the bottom. It doesn't resize. That's a shame. Let me just try reopening it again and make sure. No. Okay. Right. Now this one works in very much the same way. It's just a very different sound. Okay. Now if you're hearing lots of kind of hiss and fizz and stuff, I am using a single coil guitar and I do have an iPhone, a computer screen and two iPads and uh, various USB charger leads um so you know there's a bit there is a bit of interference but you know that's what we get with guitars right so now this one i would say is probably um i would probably choose this one over the centaur if i was looking for something that was kind of break up amp kind of sound um kind of like there if I play lightly it's kind of clean bit more gain volume down a bit bit more bright on the tone playing chords this one is a little more biting for me it's a bit more um it's a bit you might say it's a little harsher i guess maybe but harsh can be good with guitars because it can actually really help to cut through a mix right now um then we have as well as having the pre-gain and volume on this um app and the tone we also have a mix so what we can do is let me go all the way around to dry and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gain all the way up and let's do something like that with the volume different sound altogether Bring it in a bit more and take the volume back, I guess.
me just a moment while I just grab my old phone. Here we go. Right then, I have my old phone here because I have to do this now or I'm going to forget to tell you. Right. Okay, so I contacted both developers to say that I was going to be doing this stream and I was going to be using their apps. And I just said, you know, I just wondered if they had anything they'd like to say about their apps. Um, now, uh, Jared Hury G DSP replied about the Chow Centaur. Uh, and he said, I'm honored that you would include the plugin in your live stream. I guess the only thing I would ask you to mention is that the plugin is free and open source. If you like, you could also, also share a link to the project web pages, which I did at the top of the chat. Um, and I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to try and remember to also share it in the description under the video if it's something that you want to come back later because sometimes things that have been written in the chat aren't that easy to access um and uh, and then he just sort of wrote several paragraphs of compliments um about my channel because he checked it out and just thought it was a mega star honest <laughs> uh, and then um okay then Paul replied about the DD21. Uh, he says, it isn't based on any particular pedal. You did glance at some pedal schematics during the development, uh, but he looked closer at clipping diodes used in analog synthesizer filters. It's the distortion algorithm that I intend to use in my AUV3 synths going forward. There you go. Uh, he also says he has some more AU effects coming this year and he should be releasing a chorus slash flanger very soon. I don't know if I should have told you that. Well, he doesn't say not to, so. Anyway, so that's the information from the developers. Okay, so I'm going to just tell you something about Beathawk and then I'm going to tell you about this project. Just excuse me one little moment. My apologies, I am back. Okay, so um, what was I going to tell you? Right, yes, Beat Talk. Okay, so I wanted to do a track today that would just be, you know, about a minute long because my middle kid, Layla, she says that all the cool people TikTok and, and the perfect length for a TikTok video is one minute. So I'm going to make a one minute track and I'm going to put it on TikTok in an attempt to be extremely cool. Right. Um, and uh, and so I've I've so I've kind of I've missed something. I've missed the point. Oh, yeah. Right. So so I wanted to do a track that was very guitar based. So I thought um, I'm going to need some drums. And I would like to use the acoustic drums in Beat Hawk because I had a listen to the demo, really fancied using them. And so I contacted UVI and said um, that I'd like to use their drums and um, for this stream. And so they sent me a code. So I'm going to use them tonight. Um, now, what I've done is I've already uh, put some MIDI information in here, as you will see. Um, for a drum track because I thought I did say I was going to make a track from scratch but I thought the worst thing in the world would be if I kind of started the stream and uh, showed you the apps and then came to make a track and uh, couldn't really think of anything so I've given myself some drums and I have a riff to get started with and then we'll make it up from there so the riff that I have, if you can see the, um, I've got four blocks of MIDI here. The riff that I have fits in uh, one in the first block of MIDI. And actually, 
the second and last ones are the same riff this bit here is unknown territory I don't know what I'm going to play just there but I put this MIDI in so that I could you know have a, a decent start at this and so that you could have a listen to the acoustic drums and beat hook in case you haven't got them so uh, they sound like this uh, no they don't that's the wrong drum kit oh I know what I've done I had to restart the project and uh, so I need to load up <laughs> oh god I hope this works um, user library uh, projects did I save this DD21 I think I saved it as DD21 uh, load kit yeah that looks like it Yeah, okay, so there's my kit. And if I press play. That reverb's a bit much on there. I'm just going to take that down. This section here that just started playing is a bit, I might have to change that, it sounds a bit random now. Um, don't know what I'm going to come up with for that, but anyway. So, um, just check the chat very quickly. Uh, Samuel says, Jamie Minder is very cool for us oldies. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, okay. Oh, Dean's here. Hello, Dean. Thank you very much for being here. None your buzz. Thank you for joining us. I must say, I'm when I first started doing this, I did wonder, you know, I thought well, maybe, maybe no one will be interested. And I'm just, it, um, yeah, it's just, it, uh, it means, it means a lot to me that you, uh, that you do turn up to these things. Okay, so. Meerkat music. You just found out you're going to be a granddad again. Oh, now then. Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, because I was, um, I got married very young, and so I have a daughter who's 26, and so I have two grandchildren. Um, uh, but I also, with my current wonderful, wonderful partner that I've been with for many, many years, um, have two younger kids as well. So I've got... Um, I've got a 26 year old, a 12 year old, a 6 year old and a granddaughter who's 5 and one who's soon to be 1. Yeah. Okay, you needed to know that, didn't you? Let's let's do this track. Okay, so I've what I've done is I've put in some drum midi that's open to change at the moment. Um I've I've started and and drums are red, by the way, right? Drums are red. And um bass is purple so I've I've um, made a, a bass track here although there's nothing on it yet no effects or anything it's just ready for putting bass in and then I've got two guitar tracks ready this one has got the uh, DD21 on it and this one has got Chow Centaur on it uh, and that's just the channel I'm using to speak to you on so let's see if I can get a riff down uh, maybe I should like tune this guitar make sure it's in tune perhaps we'll go on to my bridge pickup here I may use some other guitars uh, tonight I've, I've been using I've been using this guitar an awful lot because I love Telecasters and this is the best one I've ever played it's probably my favourite guitar, my favourite six string guitar that I've ever, ever had. So anyway, I may use some other guitars tonight, you know, if I feel frisky enough. 
So uh, what do I need to do? I want my bridge pick up. I want to go to, uh, we'll use the DD21 first because I think I'm going to lay down a single note riff and I'm going to try and get a bit of a, a dirty sound for that. So let's go, we'll arm this track. That's sounding very noisy. Right, what kind of a sound do I want? I think something quite sort of, I've not even played you the riff yet, have I? Uh, some, I think something quite, quite dirty. For me, this does have a very, very kind of, um, it does have that kind of um, transistory preamp kind of a sound in, in a good way. I like it. It's got a lot of character to it maybe maybe we'll go with the mix all the way up let's just try that and then kind of like that that's that's not bad where are we for tony let's see. i think we want it reasonably right that's my riff that's as much riff as i have so let's get that down and see what that sounds like got the pre-count on. Fell at the first hurdle. a mistake okay so maybe I'll just maybe I'll just take that in from I don't know let's have a look let's have a quick listen to it see if it's any good I think I can play that better anyway in again at the end of the track so let's do that bit there and I already know how the track is going to end okay I'm not gonna play it back or anything I'm, I'm just gonna just gonna say that was okay enough okay enough for a, a stream um, let's hang on do that right now shall we just listen to that last <laughs> Right, okay, that's got... Uh, okay, we've got some fizz at the end of that. I'm going to just see what, what that sounds like if we just fade. Right, okay, I think that'll be okay. 
Right then, so that is one guitar sound. Now obviously, or maybe not obviously, depending how experienced you are with these things, um, once you've put the guitar down or any um, live instrument that you're recording in real audio into Cubasis 3, um, once you've done that, it's actually only recorded it in clean. Um, the effect is still changeable, right? So if I just go back to the beginning and if I just um, switch off the effect and play it now, right? So it essentially is still just clean guitar so I could put any effect on it that I want right so I'm gonna switch that back on because I like the sound of it and what I could do now is I could just like let it play and I could go into the effect and play around with it but I'm not going to do that at the moment because I'm going to record some other guitars and we'll blend the sounds later I think so let's put another guitar down um, I'm going to change my guitar because uh, because they'll be feeling left out, you know. Uh, I don't use the other ones very much since I got this one. Right, so let's see now. Shall we go with what shall I play next? Shall I ever got some chords or a bit more tinkering about? Let's see. Right then, okay. This is another vintage guitar. This is the um, this is the V100 AFD. The AFD unofficially stands for Appetite for Destruction, and it is an unofficial tribute to Slash, and it is rather beautiful. You see, it says Paradise there on the headstock sort of gives you a hint right so I'm plugged in I'm not switched on <laughs> Maybe we'll have a tune. Sorry, I forgot. Um, stupid hippie. This is a much louder guitar. These pickups are somewhat, um, somewhat lively. Let's just take down that input a little. And a bit more. Mm, there. Okay. That's all right. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have a little jam and uh, see if I can come up with any chords. Um, I'm in thinking this through. I'm in E. I'm playing a bit of a bluesy feel thing, I suppose. I'm using the blue note, so I've got to be very careful of that. Um, Let's just have a little jam and see. Take that record off there while I think about it. And not serving me very well let's uh, let's be brighter mm -hmm. 
Um, I do like these really just big controls. Now, this makes a, an awful lot of sense. It's a very simple app. Um, doesn't need much doesn't need much on it and so therefore why not make it so that when you resize it inside of Cubasis 3 you just get these enormous knobs brilliant fantastic for a guitar player because one of the things that's really really awkward about uh, doing iPad production about doing any kind of production on any kind of interface um, is when you're using a stringed instrument it's kind of it's kind of difficult whether you're using a keyboard or a screen or, or whatever you know because you've got this thing around your neck and you have to keep turning it down or the strings are screaming and and uh, I'm kind of waffling on about that but suffice it to say it's really helpful and useful to have big knobs so have I got a bit of latency there <laughs> a little I'm, I'm I'm gonna keep an eye on that okay I'm not, I'm not happy with that sound yet let's take so I don't need as much gain because it's much more powerful pickups and I'm looking for that sort of cleaner sound What the new rolls like on that? Actually, I think that's a bit brighter. Let's try that. Um, okay, let's see what happens here. I'm going to switch my mic off a moment and just have a, a little jam, see if I can come up with something. I've got some latency kicked in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restart Cubasis 3. That usually fixes it right up. Just give me a moment. My mic will go off for a, until Cubasis restarts. I think I'm back. I'm back. Okay, I think that's better. Let's give it another try. Well, that E7 sounds great. Um, let's have a look at the riff. Hang on. Maybe I could put a chord on that G. G7. Right, okay. Like a really clever hippie, I ended the riff on the blue note. Uh, the flat five. So that's uh, a B flat. And strictly that should be a diminished chord. That's not going to sound any good there. I 
I don't want that. That version might sound alright, let's have a go at that. slightly out of tune so I'm just going to retune and I'm going to go for a take on that Okay, two problems. One, I hit one of those chords like a pissy pants, um, and I'm thoroughly ashamed of that, but also I'm still not quite happy with the sound. Now, that doesn't really necessarily matter that much because, um, obviously, like I was explaining a few minutes ago, um, a stupidly great unnecessarily length. Um, I can still funny about with it after, but... It's a bit dark sounding. Um, I'm just going to see if I can quickly brighten that up a little bit. Big knobs. Okay. Ah. QASIS3 didn't save the settings from this app when I restarted it. Now, I really, really like the sound of this Chao Sento, but I'm going to just switch this out and see let's see if the DD21 is better for this, this sound that I'm looking for. Um, so, yes. Yes, I'm going to do that. I've forgotten my alphabet. Uh, hang on a minute. Okay. Why can't oh it's there? I don't know why I couldn't see it. It was there, right, right in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay, let's see if I can get this down without playing like an absolute pissy pants. here Let's just trim that back a little bit I think that take was all right um.
okay and let's do the end of the track then um i think i can anticipate how to do the ending to me i think that's that's sounding all right so far I've, i'm kind of busy so i've not been really looking at the chat room which maybe i should have a look and see if anybody thinks it sucks dean likes the last chord uh do you like it because it's the last chord dean like <laughs> like it's over and out or um uh yes and also dean no he doesn't seem to like to save the um beat hook drum kit setting at all um there are still many 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 cubasis 3 issues i'm using it today because it's it's the door that i am most familiar with and i, I thought that for the kind of track i was going to do it was the one that i would have the fastest workflow with um and as long as everything went okay um you know although actually my preferred thing at the moment is using AUM and using LK or DigiKeys um using um multi-track um EG Pulse DigiSticks um and um and I started using Atom so when I get the new Atom um I'm going to be diving into that and and that that really is kind of where my heart is at the moment with ipad production but um for a live stream i thought you know whatever i'm going to do most efficiently is probably the way to go because uh, i mean it's not like I've, I've actually not i've actually not done this before i've made tracks i made a track in beathawk on a live stream and i made um well part of a track and i made uh you know a decent sound with a uh, touchscaper I've done a couple of things like that, but I've not actually taken on doing anything quite like this in a live stream before. And actually, um, I kind of feel quite comfortable about it. Stephen says the new Atom is great. Hmm. We need a whammy bar on that last chord. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oops. I should have maybe put the Strat on. Oh, maybe I should use the Strat next. Uh, I think I might have got another guitar part in me, actually. I've had an idea. But first, I need to... Uh, I need to do something I need to find something for that middle bit of course um and um yeah I was gonna say something else but it's gone it's gone it's my age okay so let's just trim that bit down there we'll trim this as well and I think while I have this guitar on and I'm doing chords I'll see if I can find some chords for the middle bit so um you might have to bear with me a moment while I just have a little jam and see if I Switch off your mic before you finish talking, honestly. How bright am I? Um, <laughs> let's see if I can come up with something. Actually, I was thinking, you know what, right? If I struggle with this, basically this is in E, right? Um, sort of sort of minor come, blue scale come, Mixolydian maybe, I guess. Um... I'm gonna have a little jam see if I can come up with something. I need a I think I need a change of chord here. So I'm gonna see if I can find something, but why don't you guys suggest in the chat what chord would be a good chord to move to? And then if I can't come up with anything, I'll come back to the chat and I'll use your ideas. <laughs> or try them at least. Okay, so where does that middle bit come in? Um so we need to be here and i'm gonna just put my mic off and have a jam for a moment Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, um, I, I was struggling a little there and I came to the chat and nobody suggested any chords for me so I had to come up with something myself. Uh, I think I kind of like what I just played um, but I stand by what I said in my stream yesterday if anybody caught that. I do have the uh, broader shoulders in the universe so if anybody in the chat thinks that what I just played sucked or any, any of the rest of it by the way just say so. Just say so. E7. Yes. Um, I'm kind of moving now between E7, actually that's an E7 sharp 9. Uh, yes, it's an E7 sharp 9. Yeah, uh, E7 sharp 9 and, uh, and an A7 and... Um, a B diminished. This is this is my new preferred way of playing uh, a diminished chord. And uh, and in the main part, there's a a G seven in there. Okay, so I'm gonna. I think I'm done for chordy bits now. I think I'm gonna. Um, I'm not gonna try and get any of the parts down like absolutely perfect or anything. Just kind of like you know pretty close. I mean, you know, actually, I'm kind of a big fan of trying to play things right and not trying to perfect them too much because, like, when it comes to things like stringed instruments and stuff, I think that you kind of ruin them. You ruin the vibe of things. I know I sound like an old hippie, and I know that some people will completely disagree with me, but. And that's absolutely fine, but I think that, you know, um, a guitar part is meant to sound human. And the reason I didn't just play that first riff in once and then copy it across is because, like, it'll be slightly different every time I play it. Slightly more wrong, maybe, <laughs> but, you know, um, I think that that's kind of part of the beauty of it, um, for me. Anyway, so I'm, I'm going to switch out my guitar and I'm going to see if I can get one more guitar part down. Or should I do bass? Maybe I should do some bass. Uh, let's do some bass. We'll do bass and then we'll see if it needs another guitar. Just bear with me one little moment. I'm just gonna switch out my guitar. All right, let's go with the uh, the vintage VJ74 bass. It's a very, um, I actually, I, I'm not a massive fan of sunburst instruments because you see so much sunburst. So many guitars have done in sunburst, but, um, but I just happen to really, really like this one. It's quite beautiful. This scratch plate, which is now a little dinged and marked where my, my, my fingers kind of dig in on the scratch plate um was made by a very very good friend of mine um miss mrs uh, jenna Husson mcguire and um i wasn't struggling to remember her name i was struggling to remember of a comp the name of her company which is muse inc that's another link that i'll put in the description when i'm when i'm done with this video um custom made scratch plates or custom artwork on a scratch plate you'd like to send to her and um, we've got Nexus coated rotor sound strings here. And you'll see on the headstock, right? It doesn't say VJ74, it says V96, which was a misprint at the factory. And because they made a mistake at the factory, this base couldn't be shipped out to a shop. And so it was shipped to me, a very fortunate Endor C and I what I love about this particular base or this particular model is the neck because these block inlays on a maple fretboard are an absolute godsend because actually most of my Mo the majority of my instruments are rosewood fretboards and I like the sound of rosewood and I like the look of it but when you're on stage and you know you're playing some theatre where 
they've got like really knackered old lights or shit lighting or you know a shit sound man a, a, sh a, sh a shit lighting man rather or the lighting man's forgot to show up because that happens too um oh what also very often happens is that all the lights are trained on the center of the stage um and so if you if you're not the lead singer and you're stood off to the side you're like stood in the dark and you can't see your fretboard i mean rosewood is pretty dark wood so uh, maple with block inlays is a godsend for session man stood in the dark let's uh, arm the correct track here we're going to arm the bass track now my bass track has not got um it's, I could, I could have, I could have opened up um, Lembrini Black Ice maybe to preamp, you know, to give it um, a bit more of an amped up sound. But uh, for now, I'm focusing on on the two apps for guitar tonight, and um, so we're not worried too much about the bass line. For now, we might add that in later. Right, let's get a level here for the bass. hit it that hard really right mixing desk <laughs> above the guitar so when I put this down when I put down bass what I really want is I want the drums super loud um, I love drums I want the drums super loud so I can hear everything that's going on with the kit and then I just need a little little bit of the other things in fact a lot of the time I when I'm putting bass down I will switch off many of the other instruments altogether <laughs> the wrong section okay go back to the beginning right now my riff uh, so on the guitar I'm going so I'm just going to move that down the fret but I'm going to try and keep the notes on the bass as low as possible keep them out of the way of the guitar because I have this idea that I may put a harmony guitar part on so leave plenty of room for guitar so all of these notes can't be played any lower that's an E so I can drop back to open E what do I do then I play a G See what it sounds like. Okay. Should I play it with a pick? I think I prefer fingers for this one. Um, there's a, the bass players argue endlessly about whether 
bass should be played with a pick or not and um and, and it's really really quite amusing um i'll play with whatever suits the track and um i mean i'll hit it with the break if it suits the track but um I think when you play with fingers you retain more of the real lows and um, actually a lot of the time in rock music um, that can be in my opinion a negative um, but I think for a track like this I think those lows are those lows are good so let's let's see if we can do a take oh wait a minute what about the middle bit a E A E B dim Let's have a loop going. I'm going to get this right. Um so uh, snap to bar there I think that's right and then there and <laughs> I don't know whether to accent the ride or the the kick and the ride there. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> just feels right and sounds right uh, let's just put the dance oh wait a minute I need to do the other bit can't remember it now okay right it's a bit it's a bit sort of so on its own it seems a bit sort of simplistic and, and naff obvious blues progression but it sort of really really works I think so I think I'm going to go with that and see how that works shall I put that down now and then do the other or shall I... I'm going to try and do the lot I'm trying to do the lot uh, okay wish me luck cross, cross your fingers um, where am I
think I'm going to drop it off. Oh, I've made a mistake here, haven't I? What have I done? I've recorded on the, uh, you see, right, okay, tip for Cubasis. If you, <laughs> if you forget to n disarm the track that you were working on last, it will record, uh, yeah, it will record on both the track that you're trying to do now and the one that you were working on previously. So let's just highlight that and delete it. And then this, I think I'm going to save the first part. I think the first part was all right. Let's see if it's recorded okay. Okay, right, so I'm going to get rid of this bit here, take off snap to bar, get rid of that bit there, and let's have a go at doing this middle bit from here. Now it's very possible that we may now encounter a bug that has been plaguing a lot of people in Cubasis. If it happens, it'll be the f perfect opportunity for me to demonstrate it to you. I'm going to need more than that run up, I think. Right, I'm going to try and get the double on the G every time. Okay, I think that I think that was all right. Um, now looking at this, my waveform is not very tall on the bass. Um, it's plenty. I could have maybe, maybe I could maybe have turned up that input on the iRig Pro Duo uh, a fair bit higher relying on the lights on the unit um it was start it was just going um just going out of the green into the orange towards the red um and the loudest notes that i hit so um there seems there's plenty of room on on that it's new to me you know in case anyone's not seen any of my recent streams it's very new to me i'm still getting used to it but it seems that there's plenty of headroom on it um without overdriving it distorting it so which is good i like it when an interface works like that so um but there's plenty of level there that'll do us so what we got then we've got um we've got did i need to do anything just here let's just solo this have a listen little tiny fades in just to make sure we don't get any noisiness in there and I'm just gonna make them okay okay right so we've got drums, bass, guitar riff, guitar chords. I'm going to put on another guitar. Um, right, shall I go with the... 
I'm going to go with the Strat. Yes, I'm going to go with the Strat. I did kind of think about possibly using my Flying V, which you may see the headstock of it is there. Uh, it's back in the corner there, but uh, the problem with the, fi with the Flying V, it sounds wonderful. It, it sounds absolutely amazing, but um, but you can't sit down with the Flying V. You have to, if you're sitting to play, it's like this. It's um, immensely uncomfortable, brilliant on stage. Right, put your lead in your guitar. Right. We're going to need another track. All right then, so add track, add audio track. Now guitars are blue. One thing that I think is a bit naff about Cubasis is the fact that we have a limit of 16 color choices and they're not you know they're not the brightest boldest color choices really um i need white because uh pianos are white and um and there isn't white in fact in many ios apps there isn't white and it upsets me because pianos are white um but there are numerous blues, so I can have my guitar tracks all different colours of blue. And I've just selected that, which is the, do you know, I do that all the time. Right. Blue. This is a sort of aqua blue, I guess. And we're going to call this one Git 3. I want to do something brave with this one. It may be brave, it may be stupid. Now, what did I do? I used, I, okay, so I used the DD21 on the first guitar and I was gonna use Chow Centaur on guitar two, but I ended up switching it for DD21. So I'll change this one to, so I'll set this one as the Centaur. And actually, I think Centaur will be a much better choice for what I'm hoping I can do with this one. Hmm. Yeah, that seems to suit that Fender twangy. Hmm, okay. Well, it just gets something of a sound. It doesn't have to be the perfect sound. It just has to be Something approaching a, a nice sound to get us going. Notice how because there's a single coil and it's a much quieter guitar, um, I have way more gain wound up and it's less distorted. Okay. Let's see. You're going to hear that over the track. Okay, right now, I don't think that um, lead is going to work over this riff. Really, I'm not. I'm not hearing like a a lead part. So the stupid slash adventurous slash brave thing I'm going to try and do is to put a harmony part to the riff. After tuning. Good to be in tune. And this guitar is a vintage V6. It's basically vintage's Strat copy, 
you'll notice that all three, in fact all four instruments I've put on so far are basically copies of classic instruments. So the first one is a, is a Telecaster copy and it's the best Telecaster I've played. I've never played a Fender Telecaster as good as that one. And um, the V100 is of course a Les Paul and the bass is basically a Fender Jazz um, with a bit more poke to the pickups and this one of course is a Strat right okay I'm going to try and work out a harmony for this um, now what would this uh, let's see now we'll start the first note of the riff is an E so I'm going to start with a G an octave high we we'll have a little jam and see if we can figure something out. Yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? And we need to turn them guitars back up. Was guitar one neither wasn't it? I think that one works. I'm going to just put it down and have a good listen to it in a minute and try it. But I think um, I think this last bit might be a problem with the blue note. I might have to end on a blue note an octave higher. So my my note should be. Um, da -da 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 -da. So. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know. down and see if it works I'm not 100% on it but um, I often find with harmony type things if I put it down and then I just you know um, Ed says the only problem is you can never play the same thing live especially not when you are a single player yeah yeah that's very true it's very true um, I'm kind of, I may have missed a whole thread of conversation there and be getting wrong in the stick. Um, looking up. Paul. Hi, Paul. Uh, Paul keeps me up to date with apps. He's brilliant. Paul sends me messages to tell me about apps I've never heard of or releases that I'm not aware of yet. Uh, have you tried this? Have you seen this? And tries to make sure I don't miss out on freebies that don't last long and stuff. The man is uh, a godsend. Uh, okay, so Ed said, I like double tracking my rhythm guitars. Uh, oh, because Paul said, I love multi tracking guitar. Uh, still has work, decent harmonies. Um, yeah, yeah. Four guitar tracks pan is good. I can get some lovely layers. Yes, well, mm, um, it kind of reminds me of the, the Brian May thing because Brian May is, um, well, the queen of my favourite band. And, um, uh, the thing about the the Brian May thing is he has over the years been in line for much criticism because of course on a Queen album there are layers and layers and layers of guitars and um, and you know obviously this can't be recreated live unless you use backing tracks which uh, is not something Queen could have done back in the day I don't think that kind of technology was used then and then as um, as technology progressed they still did things proper 100% live they did have uh, Spike Edney off stage but they were honest about him and brought him on stage you know so um, Brian kind of took a certain amount of stick for putting things on a record that couldn't be done live and you know like I think that's a bit daft because live is a whole different thing than uh, than a record you know live you have the power of the the volume, you know, the the massive PA, the pr just that sheer power of it. it's a whole different thing, and I I always liked the fact that a Queen record was massively produced and then live it was completely raw. Um, and of course, using backing tracks is um, is almost as big a sin as using auto tune, and <laughs> opinionated old hippie tries to get himself in trouble. And um, and yes, I, I'm not going to say anything more about multi-tracking about um, using backing tracks live because uh, I might start ranting and be here for be here for a long time. But no, right? Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to try this harmony if I can remember what I did now. Um, run through. No, I can't remember it. It's basically mostly a third harmony with a few little deviations. Let's try it. 
can set up. I think so. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, going to, I'm not going to put it on the first one. I'm going to put it on the. I'm going to come in on the second one with it. I think. There. Right. Let's bring it in there. I think that might be a good idea. So I think I think it works and I, I think it sounds a little strange at the moment because the harmony is much louder than the original part when obviously it should be the other way around but um, but that's just because I'm, I'm you know I've not mixed it yet right uh, right so let's go to here and see if we can do the other part that bug I was expecting uh, Cubasis 3 to do earlier didn't happen um, so but you know it, it may yet it may yet to front. Seeing as how Doug got me all organized and set up with Streamlabs, you should be hearing the panning that I'm introducing there. Can we hear the panning? Oh, don't talk about Millie Vanilli, honestly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, how hilarious is that? The funny thing about that, though, the funny thing about Millie Vanilli is, um, is that they weren't the first people to do that. Um, not by a long stretch and um, I actually know of and it would it would really really naughty of me to say um, but I, I actually know of people who are uh, famous for recording certain things um, who didn't record certain things or people who are um, people who have actually gone out on stage and performed but it wasn't actually them 
and uh, it was on track or there was some behind, someone behind the curtain or yeah, I know loads of those kinds of stories from uh, from the business but it's really really naughty to uh, rat on people so um, one of these days when Covid is over uh, and we're actually allowed to meet with people again what you'll have to do is get me really drunk <laughs> then which doesn't take very long since I had my gallbladder out. Since I had my gallbladder out, I am a really cheap date. I don't know why that is, but it's true. Okay, so that kind of note lasts to about there. Let's kind of introduce some fades here. Just kind of quickly and sloppily just to kind of tidy up the end in there all right there's a little noise there. there's a little noise but you know for for a live stream I mean you know for the live stream I don't want to kind of uh, go into like massive great uh, production detail trying to get some um, superb finished track uh, what I want to do is basically finish a track quite quite swiftly you know for me and um, and then maybe um, when the stream is done I'll do a little more production stuff and then I'm going to put this on TikTok and be the world's most ignored TikToker okay so uh, we, what we're we missing here I didn't do anything on the middle section for the dirty riff here with the DD21, but I'm not so sure. Excuse me. I don't know why I'm burping. I'm not even eating anything. I'm starving. Um, I've never got any cake in here. Well, obviously, I've got cake in the house. Um, ginger cake. Right, so maybe in this middle section here we want some lead. What guitar shall I use for the lead? You can't notice the panning. Really? Oh no. Give it some beef, says Paul. Kill it. Do you know, I've not used it yet, Paul. I, I dare I've not, <laughs> I've not used it. Um, I think the the logo of the picture and the advertising all that stuff looks fantastic and I love their apps I really do I think they're, they're an awesome developer but I haven't actually opened it yet because I've been kind of busy I had a bit of session work coming in because I mean you know it's got it's got it's been tough financially and um, but I had a bit of session work come in uh, fortunately so I did it like right away and give it all my time for the last couple of days and um, Nailed it, got it done, so I could get paid basically. Um, so I haven't had time to look at it, and that's another app that I probably wouldn't notice. In I wouldn't have noticed it, you know, if it wasn't for Paul. So you can't notice the panning. Let me let me just a little experiment then. Let's just see if anyone tell me in the chat if you can hear the panning because it should be in stereo. Um, so we should have one guitar to one side and one guitar to the other side. Thank you very much for confirming that it's um, that the pan. Yeah, Dina, I kind of just spread the pan out really wide so that it was obvious for people who weren't using headphones. Just I just wanted to confirm that it was in stereo. Um, but I'm glad we did that little experiment there because I found that it it actually sounds better just panned a little wider than it was. 
Um, patterns fascinate me, and um, you know what's uh, what's really interesting to me about patterns is people when they're learning about production stuff they want you to give them like a chart of where things should be panned and there is indeed such a such a chart really there's kind of there's kind of like um the standard ways to pan things i mean uh, dean uh, uh, will you know dean knows a massive amount more more about this kind of thing than i do so i feel maybe kind of a slightly bit silly uh, talking about it really when Dean's in the chat but well, you know but it's my this is my gig right so <laughs> that's what I want um but uh yes there there are kind of stand ways to pan things you know and um many helpful diagrams to be found online but they really are just suggestions and more often than not when I've had difficulty with a mix you know the kind of mix where you like you keep mixing in it's like no it's, it's there's still something wrong you know I can't put my finger on it more often than not, I find moving the pans helps more than than most things really. I, I would suggest that when it comes to mixing, when putting things down, think about the frequencies that you're playing in. This is a mistake that a lot of a lot of younger bands play uh, make, um, particularly particularly guitar based bands, because if you're playing a chord down here, you don't want your riff here. Like you want your riff in a different octave, ideally, um, and um, and if one guy is playing full on chords, play chord. If the second guitar is if the second guitar is going to be playing chords, play play chords in different frequency. Work them out like um, further up the fretboard. You know, use these kind. Of. That, that sort of approach, split the frequencies, put each instrument in its own place. Um, and um, I'll tell you what, EQing's a lot easier when you do that. Anyway, this is not what I'm here to talk about. What am I going to do? I'm going to have a go at putting a bit of lead on that middle section, I think. And um, I wonder what guitar everybody thinks I should use for it. I've got my gorgeous Telecaster. I've got the Strati one, uh, which has got this lovely, I, I love this pickup position, the one, um, second one up from, from the, um, from the bridge, because you get, with these two pickups on together, you get this kind of like, almost like a quack. sound that I just really really like and we've got the V100 the less poorly type one no one's telling me what to do so I might just do what I want um, Paul really wants me to have a go with with uh, whatever it was called uh, what does it do even <laughs> what, am I to, what am I to use it for? Right, so in the chat, tell me what guitar you want me to play solo with and tell me what that app does. Beef, tell me what Beef does. What's buzzing? It's my old phone's buzzing. I got my old I got my old iPhone 6 out just in case I was having any difficulty seeing the YouTube chat on my computer, uh, which is kind of behind everything, but I can read it fine. Um, single pickup one hang on a minute Ed says V100 with distortion none your bus says single pickup one and then Ed says or telly with some crunch uh, okay maybe I can do both I've got the single pickup one on at the moment so let's let's have a see right let's let's see what see what happens uh, I mean, I've got I've got two guitar tracks actually where there's nothing on that section. So um, normally I would record the leady bits onto a different track, but um, but you know, I mean, let's see what happens. Um, so this is the single coily one, right? Yeah. So here's my strat one. Let's have a. What key am I in? Oh, 
let's put that loop on there. Is that still in the right place? I think it is. Okay, I'll come back a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why I normally use a different... Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm just going to have to turn it up. That's what I'm going to have to do. Okay, that's loud enough thing. I'm just going to close my mic and have a little jam. Do both guitars. I'm gonna do both things. What's that there? What's that all about? Did I accidentally record something? What on earth is that? Apparently I did. Okay. Well, we'll we shall delete it then. Right. Um, okay. So I'm gonna take this back a little further and try out my idea <laughs> That's one of the um, one of the bugs people have been complaining about recently with Cubasis. Let me just get rid of this old phone. Um, right, uh, yes, 
there's kind of two things really one is that when you're trying to put down some audio over some audio that's already there the old audio is like crackling away like some unpleasant nonsense in the background while you're playing over the top has anyone else in the chat experienced this oh paul's telling me about beef uh beef has three bunny q self-made i'm getting kind of close to the mic while i'm reading this my eyes are old um wood saturation with six styles drive tone crush bit depth shaping limiter oh right um right and actually we're al we are allowed to use it uh, it's not a secret uh test flight app is it paul we are allowed to use it aren't we i'm sure that we are mm, okay right i'm gonna have to do is i may not use that today but i'm gonna have to do something with that you know i'm gonna because i'm thinking that i may just live stream more I've been trying to step up my video production. I need to, I need to be more active on YouTube. Um, according to all the, you know, all the information by the people who seem to know what they're talking about. Um, but um, kind of taking a bit of a leaf out of Doug's book. I think that I still like to produce some sort of quite nicely produced videos, but um, taking a leaf out of Doug's book, you know, like the man just gets on with it he just he just does it he just streams and uh and you know that takes no production time whatsoever so in the time that it might take me to make a video which if i kind of work at it several hours a day to do like maybe a 10 minute video um it, it might sort of take me two days to shoot everything and then edit the whole thing and upload it and advertise it and all that business it's kind of at least two to three days work and for some videos it's an awful lot more it just depends on the content um so in that time if doug's streaming two or three times a day he might do nine videos right nine nine streams in the time it takes me to upload one video so um yeah that's kind of my thinking so anyway yes doug is amazing yes for oh hi vortex dude thank you for being here vortex is amazing he has ordered one of these t-shirts and it's on the way to him i've had the confirmation from the dropship company it's been shipped out to him so uh get yourself over to Bandcamp and order one and if you prefer pissy punk colors they're also available with a slightly different design it's just a slightly more subtle sized logo off to one side um in in, all, in a range of pissy pant colors check them out they're beautifully pissy pants um i kind of like the black one myself um but i'm gonna get myself another one i think i might get the gray one uh one of my friends has just ordered the gray one so i'll ask him to uh ask him to send me a photograph of himself in it that i can use for advertising oh yes and vortex if you wouldn't mind um, it would be awesome to have a photograph of you in in the t-shirt that I could use for advertising purposes uh, it's kind of it's kind of a little bit better promotion than sort of me wearing it myself I guess I've been wearing this one rather a lot it's probably due for a wash smelly old hippie right now what was I gonna do I was gonna listen to this guitar for now. Right, it's not the most perfect bit of lead but it's not terrible i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that and um i'm going to put on another guitar and so we'll use the we'll use the paradise AFD unofficial slash tribute and uh, that will be oh no wait a minute 
now I'm going to put down the V100 on the. T I'm going to put. I'm going to start. Yeah, because look, look at my project. Right. So, what we have is here we have Telecaster. So that's Telecaster Riff, Riff, nothing in the middle. Here is a V100 playing chords um, right through the middle section and then here's the strat playing the harmony and then a bit of lead so for the other lead part instead of putting it putting the v100 on the telecaster track i'm going to start another we'll start another um now have i got another blue i can use i'll use the slightly purpley oh do you know i've done it Make sure you unselect before you try and colour your track. There we go. Right now, that will be Git 4. And I'm going to need a sound for it. So, what sound did you want me to use on this one? Did you say, um, did you say Ed, what sound you wanted me to use on this one? I'm just looking at the chat here. Um, Ed said V100 with distortion, but you didn't say which one. Okay. Thank you very much, Vortex. I would appreciate that. Why do you sign up for the Beef Beta link on the Audiobus forum? Question mark. Um, well, the way I signed up for it, Ed, was that Paul... Um, sent me a link <laughs> um, in there on Facebook Messenger and I just clicked it and that was that so um, maybe seeing as Paul is the expert I could put on him to maybe put a link in the chat um, or if you're friends on, on Facebook or whatever maybe you could you know just do a message then whatever I'm busy trying to I'm just I'm busy trying to remember what it was I was gonna do here right so I need an overdrive um would would this beef thing give me that could i use beef for that what the hell is it let's have a look um beef okay i'm just gonna arm this track here remember to make sure nothing else is armed okay i'm gonna arm this track all right, let's have a look at beef. Okay. That one doesn't resize when you go full as well. Okay, well that can be my first bit of feedback from, can't it? Preset mode. Uh, preset mode? Bass 808 drum miss. Uh, okay. Mix. Am I in the right thing here? Let's just, what was this up here? This window at the top. Uh, okay, that's the same thing. Um, misc. Chilly voice, fuzzy voice. Rhythm guitar. Okay, that's got some bite to it. I was kind of looking for more of a, a lead sound, I suppose, really, but we can we can work with that let's just turn that track down a little bit it seems a bit on the loud side all right what we've got here we've got eq we've got um, a noise thing with <laughs> saturation okay crush shaping let me see. all right okay you know what? Let's get take some. I think I want to use my neck pickup for this. So
to tape. Ooh. Fuzz. I like this. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe I've got that. Oh, yeah. Right, and then, um, do I want any? I don't really want any crush on it, do I? Right, so it's, the amount's not anyway, so. Right, and. Just gonna take that off there. Right, and then shaping. That sounds kind of good as it is. Some reverb. So Springs getting some use this this stream. All right. I just I'm just going to remind myself what key I'm in. different frequency from the other. Something along the lines. Does it want a fast? I'm not really sure it needs anything.
something like that. I wish I'd recorded that one. play completely. Right, that's basically the thing, but that last bit was a mess, but first bit I think is okay. Okay, so I like the first lick. Uh, my vibrato on the end of it is really overkill. But I kind of like that. It's, it's a bit nonsensical, but I kind of like the stupidity of it. Um, I kind of blame Brian May for his... There's nothing wrong with Brian's vibrato. It's The problem is me trying to copy Brian's vibrato when I was young and failing miserably and ending up playing like that. Uh, so I'll never get this lick. Perfect, but you know, for a live stream, I don't want to. I don't want to keep you here for eighty years while I sort of kind of get the, you know, one lick perfect. Right now, I know that. Um, so Paul wanted me to try um, beef, which I really know very very little about. I've not used it before, um, and that's kind of got quite a nice sound to it. I mean, remember to solo my mic first. And then let's just solo it. And that sounds that sounds quite decent. We're not we're not here to listen to beef, but I think you know, yeah, I'm gonna have to have a, an arse about with that tomorrow. Um, now Ed wanted me to try this with more distortion. I think I'm gonna put this guitar down. Um, let me just do that. Um, if you've noticed, <laughs> my headphones, right, the wire is not ever so long, and and I can only just reach my guitar stand with my headphones on. Okay, right, so, um, so maybe what I'll do, okay, is I'm going to come here... And I'm just going to switch beef off for a moment and we'll open let's try both of the effects that we are here to actually have a look at um, so we'll go here and I'm going to add as audio units here um, there's the Chow Centaur and there's also the DD21 there, found it this time. Go Jamie. Right, I'll switch the DD21 off and let's just try. I'm pressing the wrong button. These two licks with the Chow Centaur. See what we can have. Maybe just put that loop around there. I'm going to have a tinker and have a play with this sound. I forgot to put loop on. I 
do like this, but like I was saying to Paul earlier, I just... The visuals are nice. The visuals are nice, they're awesome, but I don't use them. I mean, they don't really, they don't really mean anything. I don't, I don't, I do, I know what they mean, and I think they look awesome, but I just don't, I don't work from them. I don't work with them. I know, like, say, like, Jacob really likes to see the waveform while he's he's working on things and everything, and, and I kind of, I get it, but I just don't work that way. I suppose maybe it's because I'm a guitar guy, essentially, I, I don't know. But, um, but I do like to see it, anyway. Right, so what you're hearing there is that is the centaur with the big knobs. <laughs> yes, none of us. Um, with the big knobs. Uh, and that's cranked, the gain is cranked all the way, the level is cranked all the way, and the tone is just kind of like, what would you say that is like, just past one o'clock. Um, let's try switching it from traditional to uh, neural, was it called? We'll do that. See what I mean? That is a very different tone when you switch to that. back to traditional which I prefer personally I think right now I I like the sound of that for me this chair I've had um, I've I've I have pissy pants about with it myself quite a bit and I've really enjoyed the sounds I've got out of it but it's interesting because I've had some clean sounds on some guitars that I've really liked and then on other guitars those clean sounds have really not worked. It really does respond to the pickups. It really, it makes a huge difference. Now, uh, some software, right? The less good software, it doesn't make any difference what guitar you plug into it, it sounds the same, right? Now, when you plug a guitar into an amp, a proper amp, a decent amp, the amp responds to that guitar. Um, and uh, and and so for me the decent software that's what the decent software does and this does that um magnificently i'm i'm, I'm kind of made up with this i've had some lovely lead sounds with it and it doesn't sound quite like any other um like any other app sort of overdrive for guitar type app available on ios um that i've used so this one's a winner for me i'm just going to switch that off and i'm going to get a tone with the dd21 which of course is capable of cleaner sounds i think or maybe slightly more present clean sounds um and it also does go way dirtier so let's let's try and get that dirty sound for ed here Okay, well, that one very day that was kind of pissy pants. Okay, so what do we prefer? What do what do we dig? Um, I I personally I think I'm I'm going to be honest and say I personally really bear, you've got to bear in mind as well that they are quite different in that the Chao Centaur is kind of an emulation of a classic pedal, whereas the DD Twenty One is not uh, an emulation of anything, and it was created. Um, as as kind of as for synths really now um if i was doug woods and i was a really good keyboard player <laughs> um i would just kind of open an app and i would just play some keys for you and um and show you what it's like with synths but i've probably rambled on for something a approaching like long enough now um in this stream and you know we'll leave something for doug to do right um but um, 
as far as on guitar, I think it's more capable uh, than the Centaur. It's it's more capable in the cleaner territory and it does wind up dirtier. However, to my taste, I don't like the dirty sound on this uh, as much as I like the Centaur. The Centaur's got a real kind of flavour to it that I really like and that's a personal choice thing, I'm sure. Um, this one kind of gets, as it, as it gets more dirty, it sounds more harsh and transistory. Um, it sounds to me like a lot of those pedals made for metal guitar players in the 80s, which is not a bad thing. It's just uh, um, maybe not the f it's not maybe it's not the flavour that I that I seek right now. Or maybe I don't know. Okay, shut up, Jamie. Um, so tell me what you guys thought. Right. Okay. So Ed, you thought that was piercing, and you preferred the centaur. Yeah. I have to say, from a production point of view, I think that the the DD twenty one is probably more useful for more different applications. Than the chef centaur but of course it's kind of relevant because the centaur is completely free so you can have it anyway you don't have to choose you know you don't have to choose between them so um why am i trying to do something on my ipad screen with my mouse that's doing nothing that's for my computer that's over there um zoom pedals you agree it's too harsh yes Anyone else with any thoughts on the pedal, on the um, apps? Russ, hello. Throw in some double stop bends and squeals. Oh, I'd say, yeah, that might have been a good idea, but I've only just read that, so um, sorry about that. That might, yeah, it might have been a good idea. Actually, this whole track I've made, I kind of, um, I kind of think it's it's all right. Um, I might do a bit more with it. Uh, I think I've probably done enough with it for the stream other than to maybe just kind of go in and refine the sounds a little bit. Um, so what do you think? Shall we go with the, shall we go with the Centaur for this sound here? Just switch that one off and put this one back on. I enjoyed hearing that beef thing as well. I'm, I'm really gonna have to get some pissy panting about them with that one. Right, so I think, um, also, tell me in the chat what did you think to the um, to the beat hawk drums? I think they're really nice. They the acoustic drum pack, which is this thing here. If you go um, into beat hawk and go to your browser, and then the in app purchases, and it looks like that. I can't show you the preview page because I've got it. Oh. Right, okay. Well, it's this one here where it says acoustic drums, right? I'll show you what you get, right? So, uh, rescue, Jamie, right? So, if I press on the folder for um, acoustic drums, here's what you get. Now, this is there are different kinds of packs in Beat or okay, I have found. This is the kind of pack that I like. In drum elements here, we have got uh, drum kits that you you can open as an instrument in Beat Hawk. So that's when you open up um, the pitch aspect of it rather than the pads and then you will have a full drum kit spread across the keys if you like um, if you press on acoustic drums here and then you've got um, the same thing for all the individual component parts of the kit and then here we have a folder with bass drums in it and the symbols folder, hi-hat folder, etc. So that you can go through them and select the ones that you want. Some of them are more subtle than others. There are snare drags, there's like snare edge hits, firm hits, flams, and um, stick, uh, side stick, um, and then you feel like each of your snare hits you've got hard, medium and soft. Um, the toms I think sound particularly nice. It's not a massive collection of samples, but I just think that they sound really, really nice. Kind of like a, if you just wanted like a, you know, not a sort of a, a metal kit or, you know, not a, not a, a jazz kit. If you just want like an acoustic drum kit, 
that gives you a set of samples that you can then manipulate and make sound the way you want to, as is the way I like to do my uh, mixing and getting sounds and stuff. This is, I think, a really good place to start with those sounds. So, come out of there. So what did we think to beat hooks? Anybody said in the chat, I think beat hook drums are probably the best I've heard. Yes, Josh. Um, I've found that on iOS it is very difficult to find an app that will give you a nice set of acoustic drums. Now I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but if you if you if you could call up a list of all the drum apps available for iOS, um, you will get about ninety five percent like. Um, 808s and 909s and uh, trap kits and lots of electronics and I love all that you know I, I mean you know and your drum computer type stuff and all that and I do I love all that stuff but when you need an acoustic drum kit it's kind of slim pickings um, for instance like if you look in EG Pulse there's like a ton of kits there's only like a few like acoustic drum kits although they are good right EG Pulse kits are good um, and there's some with digistics, but again, the majority of the sounds are electronic. And um, so it's nice to just be able to open up one pack. There's all the, all the acoustic sounds, and there you go. I wish there was a bit more of it available on iOS. Maybe acoustic drums are something that's difficult to do on iOS. Maybe it takes up a lot of memory. I don't know. I'm, I'm speculating about things. I really don't have any knowledge of so I'll shut up right so um, should we yes this guitar will go with Chao Sento let's just hear that again right now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a very rough mix I'm going to close my mic and I'm going to kind of rough mix this whole thing so I'm going to say rough mix I'm going to try and make it sound decent without spending very much time on it so let's do that now maybe we'll start at the start Ah, loop. Okay, so we'll just take that loop to the end of the track. There we go. The other cue basis error I was expecting to happen didn't happen yet. Well, it won't now actually, because I'm not going to do any more recording guitars, so it won't happen. But, um, I'm going to do this and I'll try and mention that before I try and remember to mention that before I go. So.
all right okay so it's kind of like roughly getting there now earlier on i was saying when i was going to do the bit of lead in the middle section with the strat i was saying i would normally open up i would i would normally uh put the leady bits on another track and of course i should have because that's harmony part and um excuse me terribly sorry um because yes that track is a harmony part and so it doesn't want to be very loud at all and so it's far too quiet to have a harmony part uh, a lead part on so i'm just going to duplicate this track and then i will delete the lead part from there and then delete these harmony parts from that one then i can turn this up uh i'm just gonna call this lead so i know what it is and make it a different color mm, i've run out of blue you see it's not enough colors steinberg we need white we need more colors what we need is one of those things where you can make your own color right why can't we have that we've got it in aum uh, let's make it <coughs> stain color right um so get a level <laughs> Let's do some pans on these lead bits. Maybe the pan them stupidly wide for lead. Let's see what happens. Okay, now that is far from a, a brilliantly finished off, tidied up, um, mixed track. But I think for you know for for what we've achieved in the time I've I've done it, that's probably there's plenty to do for now. Now I mean, what time is it? Is it half past seven? Wow! So that's took me what two and a half hours. We're considering how much I witter, and um, you know and wobble on and on and and lose the plot basically uh, i don't think i've done too bad there i've just had a pop up on my computer screen that says watch the sound test room live in 30 minutes i think it says and um i didn't think doug was streaming tonight i know he's not been ever so well so he must be feeling a bit better so that's great but i am going to wrap up in a moment anyway um what was the other thing i wanted to talk to you about Cubasis 3, right. So there's another error in Cubasis 3, and I think it's connected with the one that we encountered earlier. Um, and what it is, is you record some audio, right? So you, rec right, this is me recording some audio. So you, you lay down some audio, and then um, you, you know, you, you play a verse, and you, then you play in your chorus part, and you make an error in the chorus. So you stop and you edit your audio back to the beginning of the chorus and you think right verse was fine i'm going to record the chorus i'm going to start the beginning of the chorus so you set it to like two bars before the beginning of the chorus and you press record and then for those two bars where there's already some audio that you've laid down you get that horrible distorted crackling sound that we heard earlier on and then you record your new bit right and all's well in the world everything's marvelous you get it down it's brilliant right you are a guitar god and then you are playing the track back later and the previous audio is still there you can still see it it's not making any sound right the volume has vanished from it um i encounter this loads when i'm doing vocals because i kind of you know sort of do sing a few lines and then and sing a bad note and go back and you know and and uh and i encounter this loads and i'll end up with a vocal take where i've got um all the little bits that i'm happy with all chopped up chopped out all the breaths and when i play it back some of them are playing and some aren't so i'll close cubasis 3 and i'll restart it sometimes they all start working sometimes some of them work 
uh, sometimes I have to close it and open it again like several times and eventually they all start working apart from on those times when they don't when occasionally bits of audio just vanish gone not in deleted folder not anywhere just gone right stolen by aliens no doubt so what that's about I don't know but I have reported it and I'm not the only person to have reported it I just wondered if anyone else had encountered it in the chat uh, what are we talking about uh, we're talking about guitar stuff Thu is good for high gain stuff don't have it um, and would love to have a go with it um, can't afford it very very costly guitar rig style app I think but the stuff I've heard of it I would say I was very impressed with um, Tone Deluxe is free yes it is that's worth having um, that's actually quite nice um, and Paul has just been getting into Tone Stack which I recommended to him I would say if you want a guitar rig type of app right personal opinion right you totally disagree with me and call me in our bed if you like I don't care but I think that those guitar rig style apps are not the best thing for recording guitars in iOS um, I'm not saying that they don't sound good enough but um, but like the Nembrini stuff you know you want an you want an amp you open an amp as an AV3 you want a chorus you open a chorus right and you build the bits up like that rather than having to open a whole program of you know a vast array of things for one thing um, but I'm in no way saying that they don't sound good enough right now if you want a guitar rig style of app I think the best one to go for is tone stack although I do have one reservation about it tone stack to me sounds better than bias um, I've, I've not had enough experience of Thu to compare it that closely but um, but uh, that one does what I've heard of that does sound marvelous but uh, tone stack I think sounds wonderful it's very, very easy to use but um, it's cheaper and the in-app purchases are very very reasonable and Yonak are a wonderful wonderful company my reservation is that they haven't released anything very new or done many updates recently and I'm a little bit worried about Yonak what's going on I do hope that they've got more to offer the iOS world because their stuff is amazing it's really really good and um, and for me because Yonak are such a wonderful developer and such nice people to communicate with I would buy their stuff rather than buying um, anything by positive cash grab but um, what else was saying and Amplitube yes I'm glad you mentioned that Amplitube right <laughs> I feel feel a bit rotten actually because IK Multimedia have been really really good to me Ampl Amplitube I've only ever sort of recent, really had a little bit of a dabble with now and again I've been impressed with it but it's like um, it's another one and it's you know it's another purchase and and actually when the new Amplitude comes out for iPad I'm going to be doing a demo for IK Multimedia for it um, and I will do my best to make a brilliant job of it because they, they've been so good to me but um, now what I've heard of, of the new Amplitude stuff it's entirely possible that um, that might come out and wipe the floor with everybody but you know We'll see the Nembrini stuff though is you know is preferable to me because it's individual AUV3s check out GE Labs yes GE Labs is, I mean to be honest like now there are an awful lot of the cheaper guitar apps as well coming out there are a lot of things to to look at um, and I'm I ought to go on my iPad and and talk about them all because there's some important ones I've missed out. But this stream has probably gone on for long enough. So um, what I'm going to do is before I say goodbye, I'm going to just play through this track. Let's have a listen to it. Not a perfect mix. It's not perfectly finished off. But let's have a listen to it.
still got loop <laughs> um but yeah so for me there's still an awful lot i hear uh, uh, in this track here that is for me it's very raw it's a bit messy in places um there are things about it i'd like to tidy up um but um i'm gonna leave it there for 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 this stream what i would do next is i would i would copy the drum midi onto many many tracks and uh, one track for each component part of the kit and this kit that i built in beat hawk um has um it has i can't count 11 component parts so bear in mind that hi-hats are probably put on the same track and the bell and the ride put on the same track you know that gives you an idea of how many times i copy the midi across and then i go into each one and um, i paste all the midi parts together i go into each one and i would just kind of like okay well in this one we'll just have a kick delete everything else and then next one go in and delete the snare uh, delete everything but the snare and so on and so on and then i would um take all the effects off in beat hook and i would uh, freeze each track so that i'd got real audio of kick snare hats etc etc also in beat hook i would make sure that i'd got everything pan dead center as well and then i would go through each drum individually to get a sound for it use some av3 effects um eq each thing and um and apply my reverbs and stuff like that and make a marvelous sounding kit and then you know get a a sound for the bass that i really really like and then i do some further work on the guitar sounds and the panning and everything and then finally i do a mix and think it sounds amazing then the next morning i'll come in here and have a listen to it and think it sounds awful and correct it um and then i master it and complain endlessly about how much i hate mastering and then i'll put it on tiktok and become a world-renowned tiktok guitar playing success not but um yes that's that's where i would take it from here so um i would just like to say thank you very very much for joining me it is so it just it makes me feel so good that uh, doing this there are some people that want to join me and and i started saying something earlier and i got distracted because i'm very easily distracted by something shiny but um doing something like this a lot of people might find terrifying um because i'm kind of you know making a track on the fly in front of anybody in the entire world <laughs> who might want to watch and if i screw up then it's kind of global but you know what with you people in the chat that i've become familiar with chatting with online and in streams and stuff even though i've never actually met any of you in person at all i see lots of familiar names and that is really really heartwarming and um and i kind of feel um comfortable very very comfortable um surprisingly comfortable just sitting here creating and wobbling on about ios apps and 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 now it's about time i shut up wobbling so thank you ever so much for being here i really really appreciate it so um until the next time i make a video or do a stream or speak to any of you online or maybe in one of the other youtubers streams like doug's in a bit or dean's on sunday take care of yourselves and be wonderful people be kind to each other make lots of music and try not to piss your pants about and go on Bandcamp and order some of my merch see you later take care bye, -bye.